everyone, this is Stephen Dempsey. Over the past couple of tutorials, we've been looking at how On One Photo Raw 2018 handles masking. We've learned that a white mask means that the filter will be at 100% or full opacity. We also learned that a black mask will make the filter 100% transparent or invisible. All the grays in between black and white will vary the degree of opacity of the filter. We also learned about selectively applying a filter by using the masking brush. You can either paint in the effect or paint it out. Another very useful masking tool in On One Photo Raw is the masking bug. Basically what this tool does is provides you with some pre-made shapes that are commonly used in masking. Let's open up a photo and take a look. I'm going to use my trusty tone enhancer for this example. Bring everything down here. Like this. So the masking bug resides over here. And when you click on it, you get some options up here at the top. So I am going to choose uh, vignette first. It's the first option. And we are going to create our own vignette. And even though I know we can do that elsewhere, um, I'm creating this one because it gives me more control. So I'm going to click right where the bird is. And if I just hit zoom on this just so I, you can see what's happening, you can see that there's a, a nice vignette happening here. And I hit the M key to bring back the options for the bug. And I can close in on the bird right like this. And I can also expand the uh, transition area and it's very easy to do it that way so again that's just a nice if i do on and off you can see exactly what's happening there it's really nice so uh the other option up here if i go back to my masking bug is um strong vignette and basically what strong vignette does and the difference between that and the one we just looked at is that the transition is um harder and it's more like a spotlight so you can see it better if I bring it into the size of the bird here. And I'll just hit the zoom key just so you can see what's happening. You can see that's a very strong um, edge there. So it's not, there's not anything gradual about it. So it's really like a spotlight. So um, there's, there's multiple uses for that. And I really do like that. I'm going to show you some more options. Uh, we'll go for another photograph. Let's choose this photograph of a field. Go back into effects. And again, we'll just add the Tone Enhancer filter and bring down the exposure and the highlights. Um, let's say that um, I want to, uh, now this is the, the effect of the Enhancer right now. So um, this is before and after. Let's say that I want to only affect the, uh, the cloud area the sky area, and I don't want to have to manually mask that out. I can do that with a um, gradient mask in the bug here, the masking bug. If I go up here, I can see some um, options here for uh, the gradient transition. And so I'm actually going to choose gradient bottom. And I will click in between the sky and the ground. And you can see that um, now this bottom part is, is untouched from the original. I'll just turn it off again so you can see that. And the um, tone enhancer, which I made everything a little bit darker, is only applied to um, the sky itself. And there's a little handle on here. You can see this. And you can angle it so it's exactly um, the same angle as the actual horizon and in this case I was just able to, to, to tilt that slightly. Um, if we look at the, at the uh, mask itself you can see what's happening. So all of the white means that the effect is being um, applied at 100% opacity and all the black here means that it is transparent so you cannot see the effect at all. Anything in between is just a transition uh, various shades of grey just so that it is uh, uh, you know a nice soft transition and not something really harsh where you can really see what's going on. So that's a pretty nice uh, thing to, to use quite a bit in landscape photography. Um, you can also we go back up here to the masking bug. Um, the uh, the other option is uh, linear top, and um, this kind of goes a little counterintuitive, to be honest. Um, when 
I applied it to the sky, I would imagine it would be linear top, but it's actually linear bottom, so it's you'll get used to it. But uh, if I choose linear top, then the tone enhancer, the darkening, is affecting the lower half of the photograph. And um, let me just show you what's happening here in the view. So uh, everything is now white on the bottom where it was on the top in the previous version. So we've basically just inverted that same thing. Um, so 100% opacity on the bottom um, and 100% transparency on the top. Uh, so you can see that the effect is only being applied at the bottom. And there we go, looking back at that again. Uh, another option here, if we go back up here, is um, something called a reflected gradient. And this is used a lot in um, kind of emulating uh, miniaturization. But you can use it for other things as well. Um, so actually, I'm going to just uh, get rid of this. I'm going to add a uh, lens blur. This is a better example. And in the more, I'll go to bokeh medium. And then uh, go back to the masking bug and go up to um, reflected gradient and click in the middle here. And now you can see what's going on. Again, we have this little handle. And the, the nice thing about this one is that you can actually independently move the um, transition on the top and the bottom. And uh, that really gives you a lot of control. So in a case like this, it looks like it's a shallow, really shallow depth of field, like the, the foreground is out of focus and the background is out of focus and somewhere in the middle it's in focus. So this is kind of a, more of a specialized kind of a, um, an option, but there's plenty of creative ways to use it. So we'll go to another photograph for another option. Choose this uh, lighthouse shot. And this time I'm going to use a tone enhancer yet again, um, but this time I'll bring the exposure up a bit. Just like that. So this is a variation on um, the spotlight idea that I showed you earlier, and in fact I've used this um, in a previous tutorial. Basically what this allows me to do is focus in on a, a particular area of the uh, composition where you want your viewer's eye to go, basically. So in a case like this, I, I want to kind of sp subtly spotlight the, um, the lighthouse. So I'll show you how that's done. So um, now that I've you know, made the tone enhancer a little bit brighter, um, we're going to selectively apply that. So we'll go to the masking bug again, and we're going to choose edges. Now, if I click on the area that I want highlighted, you'll see what's happening. I'll make it so it's, it's focused in a little bit more on this. Now, obviously, that's really noticeable. So what I would do is um, really spread out the transition so that it fades into the overall composition, and it's not that obvious. So um, let me just get out of this for a second, and you can see it better. Now, um, probably bring it down slightly like that. And you can still see it there, but you can play around with it. But the idea is that if I take this off, you can see there's a dramatic difference. Um, I bring it back up. So again, probably in reality, I would have it down here. But there's still definitely a difference, and it does help. Now, um, if I go back to the masking bug again, and um, there is another option here that's called uh, center, and it's basically the... Uh, I'm just inverting the effect. So now it's dark in the middle and it's brighter on the outside. So the um, if we look at the at the mask here, you can see that the center is uh, transparent. So there's no effect on that. And the brightness that I created in the enhancer is being applied to the outside of the subject. In this case, the lighthouse. So go back there. So there's uh, there's plenty of applications of that. And it's one of my favorite things to do. So, as you can see, the masking bug can offer almost endless ideas for using masks. I've only used a few of the many filters available to demonstrate this tool. Before I go, I'll share a quick tip. We all love downloading presets. I mean, who doesn't like presets? It can, however, become an addiction. So much so that one day you end up with a huge list, and there are probably a lot of presets you don't use. So how do you manage them? So let's open up this here, this window, and I'll show you. 
Okay, so um, there is an option if you right click on, let's see, when I'm not actually using this one. If you right click here, you have an option that is called hide category. And basically, it uh, gets rid of that listing, and uh, but it doesn't delete it. So you can recall it uh, at a later time if you want to do it. So I use this a lot, and I try to go through my presets quite often. So in this case, if I go to hide category, it literally just disappears. Now, you can retrieve it um, by going to edit, preferences, and then restore hidden preset categories. Now, the one caveat about this is that when you click on that, every one that you've hidden is restored. You, you don't get a chance to, to pick and choose the ones that you want to restore, and that's kind of a pain, and it's something that I hope that on one updates um, at some point. But uh, in the meantime, it is a good way to, to um, manage your presets for the ones you know you're just not going to be using for a while. So that's it. I hope you enjoy this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. If you like what I'm doing, please like this video and consider subscribing to my channel. Until next time, thanks for watching.